Last week, I made a video talking about Gotham Knights and its awful performance. Now, this was a game I had a lot of high hopes for, and people have been ragging it all up and down in terms of the gameplay loop, the overall quality of the game in terms of graphics and how Arkham Knight looks better. But where I come in and where my specialty lies is the overall gaming performance and optimization. Now, this game received a lot of backlash for being 30 FPS on console, and I titled my video Gotham Knights is better on PC. And while that is technically true and accurate in every way, it is still nothing to really brag about or write home about because honestly, the developers left a lot to be desired. However, today I have a little bit of good news for you. As of last night, the developers released a brand new patch for Gotham Knights that actually improved the overall performance of the game. Now, the developers were very clear that this is not the official performance patch of the game, meaning they are still working on another update that will better improve the overall game game's performance and stability, and I definitely look forward to checking that out. But the update they did apply last night actually did fix a few things, and in doing that, it did improve the overall game's performance and overall frame rate at various resolutions. I'm gonna have the patch notes on the screen right now, but one item I wanted to point out is bullet point number three, fixed issues caused by graphical settings not being applied properly. Now, in my opinion, bullet point number three is the bug that they were able to fix that actually made a difference to the overall game's performance. The game's performance is still not quite where I would like to see it, but it is a massive step in the right direction because now we actually have a difference between 1080p and 4K. Whereas before 1080p, 1440p, DLSS, 4K, it didn't matter. The gaming performance was essentially the exact same, but that has been fixed, so let's talk about it. Okay, with my content, I like to get straight to the point and not waste your time, so this is really what we're looking at. Ray tracing is still broken, and there are no performance increases at 4K at this time, so essentially the 4K results this week are more or less the exact same as last week. I will have the numbers on the screen right now for you to see, and as you can see, the highest preset, the high preset, the medium preset, they're all within that margin of error you're talking one, two, maybe three FPS at a time. So essentially there's no performance increases right now at 4K, but that's not where the improvement comes in with this new patch. The improvement is when you start going to different resolutions other than 4K. Okay, so now this is where things start to get a little bit interesting. If we drop down the 1440p, we can notice a nice performance increase between last week and this week. Last week with the highest game settings at 1440p, the average frame rate was only 79 FPS. However, this week after the patch, we can see that the average frame rate is 103 FPS. And it's a similar story with the high preset where you had 77 versus 99, and the medium preset is the same as well where you were looking at 80 FPS, but now you're looking at 105 FPS. Dropping down to 1080p, we once again see another performance increase, whereas before the patch on the highest preset, we had an average frame rate of 82 FPS, but now we have an average frame rate of 102 FPS. And once again, we see similar performance increases on the high preset and the medium preset. However, we still have a problem here because if you take the new numbers only and you look at 1080p and 1440p, it is a similar story to last week before we had the patch. The numbers are basically the same within margin of error. 1080p should be substantially better than 1440p in terms of overall frame rate. Actually, the 1440p numbers in some cases are just a little bit better. And I'm looking at the highest preset and the medium preset when I say that. Now, you all know I'm not the biggest fan of using DLSS but I do acknowledge it is a thing and people do use it. So this is what we're looking at. When you compare DLSS quality and balance from last week prior to the patch, you can see that with the new numbers, we once again see a noticeable frame increase, although it really doesn't make much sense here. Previously on DLSS quality, we had an average frame rate of 79 FPS, whereas now we have 100 FPS as our average, which is good. But on the balance preset, which focuses a little less on quality, Previously, the average frame rate was 82 FPS, and now our new average frame rate is 98 FPS. That is a nice improvement, but why is quality outperforming balance? That is a problem. And we have a similar story whenever we look over at performance. 
Last week with a performance preset, we had an average frame rate of 75 FPS, but this week we have an average frame rate of once again, 100 FPS. Why in the world is performance DLSS the exact same frame rate as quality? Performance is supposed to favor performance over quality. So that doesn't make sense. And ultra performance is 97 FPS this week after the patch. Whereas last week it was only an average of 70 FPS. So that is a nice nice 27 FPS increase there. So that's definitely good. But again, ultra performance should be above performance and it's not. This makes no sense at all. This game still has a lot of work left to be done in terms of its overall performance and optimization. Ultra performance should have the worst image quality and it does. But because of that, it should now have the highest frame rate, but it doesn't. It's on the bottom. And DLSS quality should have the best image quality, and it does, but because of that, it should have the lowest frame rate, but it doesn't. It has the highest. Everything here is completely backwards. DLSS is broken in this game. While the performance is still not where we would like for it to be, it is still a lot better than it was last week. There is now a noticeable difference between the different resolutions, and that's a good thing and it's even further ahead of console than where it already was before. So with all of that being said, is the performance now in a place where you would feel comfortable buying the game? I'm not talking from a gameplay perspective, a gameplay loop or, or anything like that. That's ultimately up for you to decide and there's plenty of game reviews dedicated to that type of questioning. But for me and the performance perspective, I'm asking you, is the game now in a place where you feel like you would get your money's worth if you spent your money on it. You can now actually hit 100 FPS in certain situations, whereas before you completely could not do that. So overall, that is a nice improvement, but is it enough? I don't know, you let me know in the comment section down below. And hey, look, I'm trying to hit 5,000 subscribers before the end of the year, and I'm almost there. So if you haven't done so already, could you do me a favor and just hit that subscribe button? I would really appreciate it. And no matter who you are, could you please hit the like button because that goes a long way in helping me out. And that's basically all I got. If you want to see the awful performance numbers of this game from last week, check this video out right here because that's the video I've been referring to this entire time. So I'll have it linked right there for you. But that's all I got. Until next time, E-Rock out.